So the question is, not to be or not to be, or maybe it is, the question is, who wins the fight? What is it that determines who wins the fight? Is the guy who wins going to be the, the biggest guy, the strongest guy, the fastest guy? The guy with the most experience, the guy with the best technique, the guy with the best teacher? What is it? Maybe you know, uh, maybe you know Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. If not, you should stop this video right now and go read it. But let's assume that you do. We have these three characters right, in Romeo and Juliet. We have uh, Romeo, we have his pal Mercutio, and we have his antagonist, Tybalt. Three young guys, right? You don't understand the situation at summertime. The wine is flowing freely, and these are young teenagers on their own with nothing to do and no parental supervision. Perhaps that sounds to you like a recipe for disaster. We have these three guys, and uh, what do we know about them? What do we know about their character? Who are they? And so on. We have, uh, we have Tybalt, who's a, a bit of a bully and a braggart and pushy and that sort of way. We have Mercutio, the clown, who takes nothing very seriously. And we have Romeo, who's at that stage in his life where he falls in and out of love every 20 minutes with every girl he sees. <laughs> so of these three guys, if you had to guess, if you had to guess, who would you think is the better swordsman? They're all of the same social class. Uh, Tybalt, Mercutio, a bit older than Romeo, perhaps. But they're all entitled to carry arms. Who do you think practices the most of those three types of guys? The bully, the clown, or the lover? Who do you think spends the most time thinking about fighting, practicing with his weapon, taking lessons, whatever, all that stuff? See, I would guess it would be Tybalt. Mercutio doesn't take it seriously enough. Right? He does what he has to do because, you know, come on, man. You have to be able to handle a sword to a certain extent. That's your, that's your age, your sex, and your class at work. You got to be able to do it just like you got to be able to ride a horse. Right? So, uh, so he is somewhat skillful, no doubt. What about Romeo? What, how much interest do you think Romeo has in practicing with his sword? Well, at least the steel one. How much do you, time do you think he spends thinking about that as opposed to romance and love and poetry and flowers and, and of course, Juliet at the moment? So we have this fight. They're hanging out and uh, words come to, the words come to blows as words often do. And Tybalt and Mercutio trade insults back and forth. And then up come the swords. And in the event, Tybalt wounds Mercutio, and Mercutio dies. But understand what happens there. Are Tybalt and Mercutio really fighting? Or are they posturing? I submit to you, it's a posturing contest that goes wrong. And it goes wrong, why? Because Romeo takes it too seriously, perhaps because he doesn't know about fighting. He can't tell the difference between fighting and posturing, maybe. Right? And he tries to break it up. Why came you between us? I was hurt under your arm, says Mercutio. Understand. Mercutio was wounded, fatally wounded, not because of Tybalt, but because of Romeo. Tybalt didn't kill Mercutio. Romeo killed Mercutio. Put that in your pipe for a second. So Romeo's best friend, 
Lucusio now lies dead. And I would submit to you that Romeo is suppressing with all his might. His brain is absolutely denying the fact that Mercutio is dead because of him. Can't deal with that. Can't think about that. So instead, he transmutes that to anger and goes after Tibble. Now, Tibble, having seen Mercutio fall, hustles away from the scene with his pals. I understand Tibble's position. He's a bully and a loudmouth and a braggart, but we have no reason to believe that he's a stone cold killer. What might Tibble be feeling? Having unintentionally, having accidentally wounded to death Mercutio. I submit to you that just as Romeo cannot think about what just happened, Tibble can't think about anything else. Romeo catches up to Tibble and they fight. And Romeo kills Tibble. See how that's possible? If Tibble is a better swordsman, how does Romeo kill Tibble? Well, Tibble is not able to access his skills at that moment because he's emotionally tangled up in what just happened with Mercutio. He is unable to defend himself. A strong wind could have taken him out at that point. Romeo is feverishly angry, partly from his own suppressed guilt, partly for the loss of his friend, and who knows what else. Right? So here's a, an interesting case where Shakespeare writes about a fight in which a superior swordsman gets killed by a clearly inferior swordsman. See how that happens? We talk about, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time you know, working out, getting stronger, getting faster, practicing your technique, emphasizing that. And it's not that that stuff isn't worth anything in a fight, but it's like jacks are better to open. It, it, it isn't the necessarily the determiner of who the victor is going to be or who the survivor is going to be. Right? If and we have, we have a lot of examples of this. I mean, you don't have to go far. If the biggest, strongest guy wins, then how do you explain the knockout of Mike Tyson by Buster Douglas? If the biggest, strongest, fastest, hardest guy always wins, how do you explain the defeat of George Foreman by Muhammad Ali? If youth and speed is what counts, then how do you explain the defeat of Michael Moore by the aged George Foreman? So we spend a lot of time focusing on developing superficial things, but those things may not be the things that determine the outcome. They may be you know, required to get in the ring, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna win. You know, there's an old joke about a guy, uh, about a guy on his hands and knees you know, under a streetlight, and a cop comes along, and he says, hey, buddy, what are you doing down there? And the guy says to the cop, I'm looking for my wallet. He says, well, when did you have it last? He says, uh, I, when I came out of the bar on 3rd Street. And the guy says, 3rd Street's over there. How come you're looking for it here? And the guy says, the light is better here. So we look for the answers in places, not because that's where the answer's going to be, but because it's easier to look there. So it's easier to say, oh, I'll just do 100 repetitions of disengage and I'll be unbeatable. Yeah, good luck, pal. The things that determine the outcome of the fight sometimes are on an entirely different plane than the physical. It's the emotional, the psychological, the spiritual, in here and in here. That's where the fight really happens.